Both teams with identical four and three records in conference play so far, but since they played each other two weeks ago, both of these schools have gone in decidedly different directions. We welcome you inside the Lloyd Noble Center on the campus of Oklahoma University alongside Fran Fraschilla. I'm Rich Hollenberg. So in the ensuing two weeks since they played, the Sooners have gone 2-0, wins in convincing fashion. The Jayhawks, on the other hand, have lost two straight for the first time in eight years. Dr. Fraschilla, what's the diagnosis for the Jayhawks? I'm going to leave it to Bill Self to find out the antidote, but I do know this. Kansas has lost to number one, number two, and number five in the country. Some of it's scheduling, but they certainly have to start playing better than they have over the last couple weeks. This is the 220th meeting between the Sooners and the Jayhawks, and right off the bat, Jalen Wilson opens the scoring. It's almost like Oklahoma thought they were going to the wrong basket. Easy bucket for the young man who grew up about two hours down the road in Denton, Texas. We'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit, playing against a former high school teammate this afternoon. Here's Elijah Harkless making his fourth straight start for the Sooners, and he's been a little bit of a spark plug for Lockwood. Yes, Kruger. he has. A transfer from UN, excuse me, Cal Northridge. Missed the first four games until the NCAA gave him a waiver to be eligible. He is a jack of all trades. And a freshly shorn Austin Reeves triggering the inbounds. Got a haircut after we saw him at practice yesterday. Here's Reeves with the ball, 12 in white. Kansas has to keep Reeves out of the paint today. A deep three by Davion Harmon with the shot clock running down, and it's no good. Here comes Ochai Abaji, the leading scorer for the Jayhawks, number 30 in blue. Kansas only scoring six points a game in transition in conference play. Bill Self's told us a number of times recently they need easy baskets, and that's a good place to go right there. But McCormick misses from point black range. It was challenged under the basket by the Sooners. First shot of the game for Reeves. In and out from the three. And Garrett clears. It's as good a look as Austin Reeves will get all afternoon. Christian Brown goes inside again. Two feet in the paint. The bucket and the bump for David McCormick. Rich, you know that David McCormick, prior to the Baylor game, in his previous three, was averaging 20 a game. Early foul trouble early in the week, Monday against Baylor, slowed him down, but only because he wasn't on the floor. They have to establish him inside early. It opens up the rest of the offense for the Jayhawks. Had 17 points earlier in the season when these two teams faced off, and he already has his first three, and it's a five-zip Kansas lead to start out. Marcus Garrett guarding Austin Reeves, who's the catalyst of this team. And again, you'll see this a lot. The four perimeter defenders for Kansas will switch freely, trying to keep the ball in front of them. And now Oklahoma's gone to a four out, one in offense as Every, well. Everybody has in this league. Yeah. Virtually. Good D. Five on the shot clock. Harmon takes it into the paint. Oh, that's nice. A left hand in yep. Davion Harmon with his first bucket. He's not only playing the best basketball of his career, but he's so efficient. He is always under control. Even on that drive, there was no danger of him running over the defender. He's led the Sooners nice. in scoring the last two. McCormick, another bunny miss by David McCormick. Has to finish those. He has a tendency to take his eyes off the rim when he misses those easy ones. Here's Harkless. Out to Harmon. Back-to-back -back buckets for number 11, Davion Harmon. And right now, Denton Geyer High School has seven of the first 10 points in this game, Wilson and Harmon. Former high school teammates. And best friends, I might add. Here's Wilson with an answer. Good rhythm, good rhythm for Jalen Wilson. He struggled lately, but it's mainly been scouting report oriented. Look at this. Oh my! Look at this! Oh! I know one guy who's excited right now, that's Coach Grant Long down at Geyer High School. I hope the Geyer Wildcats are watching this one because a couple of their alumni are dominating tie game eight off. well-intentioned friend you can count on him to go get food gas not so much at least he's also a i brought a ten dollar taco and burrito cravings pack friend only at taco bell 
first play of lunch. Oh, I gotta see that again. He's looking at not one, not two, not three, but 19 grams of protein per can and chunky chicken noodle. That'll fill him up. Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. Well, today they are foes, but for a lifetime they've been friends. Jalen Wilson on the left, Davion Harmon on the right. Now they're on the same court, just like they were when they were growing up as third and fourth graders. Absolutely. Take a look at this picture. BU All-Stars right there. Harmon on the left, Jalen Wilson. By the way, right to the right of them, R.J. Hampton and Chris Harris, who's at Oklahoma State. R.J., of course, with the Denver Nuggets. But these kids go back a long time. Very close friends and now competitors. Here's Wilson, and he is off to a scorching oh, start. You think these two guys weren't revved up today? Rich, the only problem with Jalen Wilson has been that once you get to a point where you're a key guy, teams start to shut you down, but he's getting good looks today. And there's a turnover forced by the Kansas defense, and that doesn't happen very much to Oklahoma. They only average 10 turnovers a game. Look at the open shot right there, a miscommunication on the switch. And Jalen Wilson, you know, we asked Rick, uh, Bill Self earlier in the week, and he said, he's getting what every good Kansas player as a freshman gets. Increased, uh, let's say, uh, defensive uh, effort to slow him down. Man, that Geyer High School connection, though. Eight points for Wilson, eight points for Harmon. Davion told us a funny story yesterday after practice that after a high school playoff game, they went to a chicken place to get chicken, and Jalen Wilson ordered catfish and got food poisoning. Yeah, you don't do that. You don't go to Chick-fil-A <laughs> or Chicken Express to buy to get catfish. Here's Garrett left alone for three, and the Jayhawks are firing on all cylinders in the early mo moments. Well, we'll talk about Marcus Garrett today. He's not getting quite the uh, attention nationally as he did a year ago when he was such a key guy, but he's not playing any worse. He just has a different role this season. Good Shoot. pass. Here's Williams off the window. Great find by Austin Reeves. Good cut by Williams on the backside. He's a very good cutter away from the ball. Good example right there. Now number one, Jalen Hill on the floor. Missed a couple of games due to COVID protocol for Lon Kruger. We have yet to see Brady Manick on the floor. Tough shot, contested. And here comes Austin Rees, leads this team in scoring, leads them in rebounds and assists. Only player in America to average 15, five and five so far. Good hands by Garrett. Yeah. Yep. And McCormick comes away with it. He'll shoot that off the break. Nice A pass. Concerted effort to go inside, and that time McCormick lays it in with the left hand. Yeah, great catch by David. That pass was slightly off target. He caught that like a wide receiver over the shoulder pass, but good post feed, good finish. These two teams both tough defensively, but we are seeing an offensive game so far well, in the first five. What we're seeing is renewed uh, intensity from the Kansas Jayhawks. They rarely lose two games in a row, and you can see the, the, the effort. Here's Kirk Queff, and he gets in the scoring column. In the last game, Rich, they let Kirk Queff shoot that shot, and he has uh, said that that's something he's worked on since, knowing the next time he played KU, they were going to give him that look. Wilson with the drive, blocked from behind by Hill. And he comes away with the loose ball. A great save there, too, by Queff. Got to keep Reeves out of the paint if you're KU. Harmon had that partially blocked by Ochai Abaji. It's going to stay Oklahoma basketball. Timeout on the floor with 14-14 to go and a four-point lead for the number nine Kansas Jayhawks. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Five Hour Energy Shots. Get it done. Shooting lights out. KU 60% from the field, perfect from three-point range, and Oklahoma shooting 71% overall, two for five from beyond the arc. Brady Manick making his first appearance, touches the ball off the inbounds. And you know Lon Kruger would love to get him involved offensively early. Well, particularly because last time they played uh, Oklahoma, they didn't have to worry about the three-point shot. Samoja Gibson 
a microwave offensive player for Kruger entering the game too. He's the guy you have to worry about from behind the arc, but not the big guys, unless it's Manic in there. Mitch Lightfoot. Like this. Stolen away by Reeves. They tried to post a Baji out of the timeout on Gibson. Good reaction by the Sooner defense. First turnover for the Jayhawks. In and out by Brady Manick. Great look. Should have gone down. Reeves had a similar look. Reminds me of what Jeff Van Gundy once told me. Balls in the air. Good coach, bad coach. Good coach, <laughs> bad coach. Here's a Baji, a deep three. Second in the conference from three-point range, but he's off the mark on that one. He may be as improved as any player in this conference this year. Here's Emoja Gibson, and that's his specialty. That's what he does. Terrific young man, transfer from North, North Texas. Another That's right down there in Denton. Yeah. So Denton making its uh, presence felt today. Young man from Waco, Texas. Ochai's playing with great confidence this season. So is this guy. Christian Brown. Corner three, no. Tap to Hill. Chance for Oklahoma to take the lead. Reeves fouled on the baseline. Well, coming up at 2 Eastern here on ESPN, as soon as we're done, North Carolina State heads into Chapel Hill to take on the Tar Heels. North Carolina's won five of the last six in the rivalry against the Wolfpack. That game coming up immediately after we wrap up here in Norman, and that's available on the ESPN app. So, of course, the Tar Heels on the struggle bus a little bit, friend. You know, they're getting better. They're, they're playing six freshmen. And I know Roy Williams wants to play a little bit faster because they that's their game. And uh, But I'm as compared to Kentucky, I think Duke's going to get better. Okay, Jalen Johnson's back. Uh, he's a key piece. Matt Hurd's been terrific. But Roy's playing six freshmen, and I see improvement each and every game. Remember, they got beat in December by NC State in Raleigh. I've heard you say this a number of times. The key this year more than any year is get old and stay old. It helps. It really does, especially with all these pauses and all the mental stress of, uh, of these athletes. It certainly helps to have guys who've been through this a little bit. Wilson off the mark for the first time. Oklahoma down by one, 12 minutes to go. Here's Harmon. He did it with the right hand that time and just rolls off the rim. Offensive rebound to Manic, and they can't pay it off. Well, that drive by Harmon was challenged by Garrett, who's got about four inches on him. Loose ball, and it's Kansas ball. And Aruna. Offensive foul, we're going the other way. We have a timeout on the floor and a close one, as expected. KU on top by one on the road. So far, both teams started out hot offensively, and both teams' defenses had ratcheted up in the last few minutes. Here was a questionable call before yeah, we went to break. I thought so. That's a block. I, they missed it. Bill Self is letting the official know. It's a good crew today. A couple Final Four guys. And, you know, it's not so much that they may have missed the call. It's you got a kid like Aruna who is just starting to help Kansas, and he picks up a foul that he probably shouldn't have. should have been ball out of bounds. You know, as a coach, you're trying to defend him and also let him know, look, not your fault. Keep playing. Because they need a guy like him off the bench if this Kansas team is going to continue to get better. France, speaking of off the bench, it's almost all reserves on the floor right now. Wilson and Abaji still in there, but Tyon Grant Foster making an early appearance along with Dewan Harris. Bill Self said in the press conference the other day that uh, Tyon hasn't shown enough the Juco transfer, former All-American, but they need that bench and there's a good little bit more solid play from Davion Harmon who turned 20 yesterday so he's uh he's having a good start to the end of his birthday I would say he's halfway to his birthday number already 10 points here's Harkless with a steal good three pass. on one Hill composed for two. Oh, I love what Harkless did he looked off Hill on a three on one that's not easy a two on one is much easier because the defender on a three-on-one is right in the middle of the floor. 
And there's a traveling violation called on Jalen Wilson. Friend, the Jayhawks are going decidedly small. Yeah, take a look, Rich. A three-on-one. Watch him look off. See, once he looks off Jalen Hill, Harris bites a little bit to the, to the outside. And that's a harder fast break opportunity, believe it or not. It's counterintuitive than a two-on-one where you can keep the ball until the last minute and until the defender commits. Good job by Harkless. Here's Harmon. Gibson thought about the three. Now gets it inside to Manic for his first two. Switching defense, not always the best antidote. That time, confusion, and Bill Self wanted to take a timeout. Remember, Kansas is still a great defensive team, Rich, but they have struggled, I think, with some of their switching opportunities in the last few games. It takes Garrett off of the best player sometimes, and that time, watch the confusion here on the ball screen. Two defenders go with the ball, nobody rotates from the backside, and then Aruna is the guy that's late. Here it comes again. You have to get from the backside to the middle of the lane in order to tag Manic, and Bill Self is making that correction. No bigs on the floor for him as well. Mitch Lightfoot and David McCormick both on the bench. Bill Self traditionally loves having two bigs on the floor in his 18th season at Kansas. In some ways, Fran, he's had to reinvent that offense. Well, he's, he's a great basketball coach. He's in the Hall of Fame for many reasons. They have played big, they have played medium, and now at this point in the game, they were trying to play small, but you see McCormick is back in. Their best team over the last five years has been four out around the big, usually Azubuki, this year McCormick. Kansas trying to stem an 11-0 Oklahoma run. And they can't do it there, another rebound for Manic. Tough break, but I love the drive by Garrett. He has to look at his shot more. We're going to see a little zone right now. This is the third time this season that I can remember they've gone zone, and particularly because they have not been able to guard Kansas right now. Deep three, Gibson. He leads this team in three-point shooting, and he's got two already this afternoon. Largest lead of the game for the Sooners. Uh-oh. Foster's only got one three all season, a quick one. Here's Reeves. Loves to operate on the baseline, but he comes up short there. Only one threat on the floor on the perimeter right now, and that's Brown. Good pass. Grant Foster out to the corner three, and Aruna's off. Good basketball, just didn't make a shot. Watch the lob. And Alondis Williams couldn't handle the lob from Harkless, and it'll be KU basketball. Now listen, you don't, you go zone, but you gotta know where Gibson is, and that's just too late. Christian Brown really liked the way he's evolving. Defensively, he's still a work in progress. Here's Brown, gets it inside. Good passing by KU. And Aruna drives, gets it blocked, but a foul is called. And, and Aruna will go to the line and shoot two. Early sample size from Grant Foster, but I like what he's doing. He missed the first three. Now he's attacking the gap, and he's gotten his teammates two good looks. Mon Kruger, 666 career wins in his 35 seasons as a head coach. Last 10 here in Norman, Oklahoma, has taken this program to a final four a few years back with Buddy Heald and company and he is solidly in the NCAA tournament right now according to our Joe Lenardi. Those 35 seasons don't account for the time he spent in the NBA right. as a head coach of the Atlanta Hawks, assistant coach of the New York Knicks. Came back to college at UNLV and uh, it's a little bit closer to home. Silver Lake, Kansas right outside of Topeka where he is absolutely a legend. Here's Reeves. Garrett stays with him. Stolen away. Two possession ball game coming up on eight minutes to go in the first half. Kansas looking to avoid three straight losses for the first time in forever. 
Off the mark for Grant Foster. That's a tough shot. He's yeah. one for 17 this season. It's like a pinch hitter. You know, he's not getting enough looks to gain any confidence. Queth from the elbow extended off the mark. If you're Bill Self, you give him that shot all day long. He, can he make it? Yes, but not at the level that he can hurt you. Up and under, off the mark. And how many close-range field goals has David McCormick missed Well, already? you know, he had a stretch early in the year where he missed a bunch, then he got hot. Right now, he's a little fatigued. I think he's going to be coming out. There's Good another defense. KU deflection. Take KU's defense, last couple possessions, excellent. Yeah, they've had six deflections already, and that one leads to points off the turnover. Marcus Garrett has five, and the lead is four for Oklahoma. Well, that last bucket, Fran, snapped a missed streak of field goals for Kansas of eight in a row, but now Marcus Garrett getting them back in the scoring Remember, column. only six fast break points a game for Kansas. Here's two of them today. And yet, Kansas is still ranked number nine in the country. For the 229th week, they are in the top 25. They surpassed about eight games ago those great UCLA, a dynasty, really. UCLA had been in the top 25 from 1968 to 1980. No shock to anybody. Very sloppy play by Oklahoma. They are giving Ch Kansas a chance to get back in this game. Rich, you know, we talk about Marcus Garrett. Last year, he was the third best player on maybe probably the best team in the country at the end of the season. The two guys they lost were all Americans. He's had to be a different kind of player this year. You know, it's like a pilot on a plane. It's also putting the baggage on the plane. He's also serving the peanuts. It's a little different role for him because he's such a great connector. The lobs to Azubu Azubuki, taking the pressure off of Dotson, being a defensive stopper. A little bit different this year. He's not playing any worse. He's just in a different role. Harmon, catch and release. Too easy. Now listen, Garrett, to go back to Garrett, only gave up one basket of the 30 points Jared Butler or Baylor had the other night. But Christian Brown and Ochai Abaji, as good as they've been offensively, they have not yet done the job defensively. You can't give up that open shot on the other end right there like Christian did. Got to be more aware. It's a seven-point Oklahoma lead, their largest of the afternoon. Five on the shot clock. Brown, a deep three, and he's yet to get in the scoring column. Last year, when Garrett drove downhill to the basket, if the defender helped off of Azabuki, it was a dunk. The way things are going for Oklahoma's offense, he expected Kirk Queth to knock down that three. No, you know what, Rich? I'm going to tell you this. They want him shooting that shot, Kansas. Why is that? Because he doesn't make them. Yeah. He's made two this season. So you play the percentages, and if he wants to keep shooting it, hey, Bill Self is glad to oblige. The days of seven-footers shooting threes, commonplace. Sure. But not necessarily Kerr's strength. That is. Right. Missed the follow jam. It goes out of bounds. Kansas basketball. If, if, you're, if you're Bill Self right now, you actually feel pretty good because you could be down 15 in this game. But Oklahoma has been not as sharp the last part of this half as they were to start the game. Now going with Dewan Harris to run the point. Abaji back on. He's joined by Wilson Garrett and Mitch Lightfoot. And Harris is the co-pilot of that plane that uh, Marcus Garrett needs. And now Marcus gets an open three and yep. knocks it down right on cue. Exactly. See, now he plays off the ball a little bit and he doesn't have to facilitate the offense. And the other thing Bill Self told us yesterday was, I want Marcus Garrett being more aggressive with his own offense. He had eight threes coming in, already has two this afternoon. This is the best I've seen him play. He hasn't played poorly all year. Great touch pass from Williams to Queth. The better Harris can grow as a young freshman redshirt, the more this guy can look for a shot, Garrett. How about that Oklahoma offense, Fran? Nine assists on 11 made field goals. That's Lon Kruger. Yeah, that's just that's just good basketball. You'd expect that from well-coached teams like we have today. 
Alondis Williams, one of those junior college kids we always talk about, takes a year to get comfortable and is having a good senior year. You know, if I was tying Grant Foster, I would consider this my redshirt year. I, with the NCAA giving you a freebie, I would I would be committed to staying three years and, and, and using this as my fr a sophomore year because I think he'll get better, just like Williams has. Under four minutes to go. Oklahoma, six-point lead over number nine, Kansas. Kansas beat Oklahoma at Allen Fieldhouse in a close game. They won it by four last time they played each other two weeks ago. Take a look now. We talk about Alondis Williams growing up. Juco transfer, dropping the dime. Easy, too. ESPN's exclusive. Up on the Jeep halftime report, we talked on game day about what a threat Houston was, show you how they're living up to it. What do you think in the first half, Oklahoma and Kansas? Well, Kansas' defense, both in transition and half court, has really been non existent. Over half of Oklahoma's points have come to the, from the three point line. The job that Lon Kruger's done is absolutely incredible. Anywhere he coaches, they play with such fundamental ability. They share the basketball, they don't turn it over. Franny, Lon Kruger, the most underrated coach in America. Well, he has been for many years, Seth. Six different teams have won 20-plus games in his tenure, five to the NCAA tournament, tying a record with Tubby Smith, and three different teams to the Elite Eight, Rich. He's, uh, he's understated and he's underrated because he does not ever, ever look for the limelight. And as of right now, Oklahoma and Kansas both projected in the NCAA tournament by our Joe Lenardi resident bracketologist. That means 70% of the Big 12 is going to be represented in the Big Dance. Listen, this is nothing new. Right. Since 2014, the Big 12, according to Ken Pomeroy, has been number one or number two. They don't have the big dips, like te Big 10 has been the fifth or sixth ranked league in the past few years. This is a consistently solid league. Great coaches. Six of them have been to the Final Four. Eight of the 10 have been to an Elite Eight. This guy's a Hall of Famer, certainly. And what I love about this league is we watch kids grow up from their freshman year to their senior year. Yeah. Both of these coaches, such legends in their own times and have some striking similarities. You know, we've talked about it. You mentioned that Lon Kruger's from Silver Lake, Kansas. That's only about 40 minutes from Lawrence. Well, on the other sideline, you have Bill Self, who grew up in Edmond, Oklahoma, went to high school there. That's about 30 minutes from Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah, and he told us he had no interest in coming to play. Nope at Oklahoma. He grew up an Oklahoma State fan, and uh, he, he also told us that the, the, the pull to come home and win when they play in Stillwater or Norman is not what it was when he was a young coach. Right. There you see what you're, exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, here's right? what we're talking about. I mean, both of them grew up right near big eight schools at that time, but both chose the underdog schools. Lon Kruger saying, everyone rooted for Oklahoma, so I wanted to root for Kansas State. Bill said the same thing about Oklahoma. He said, everyone rooted for Oklahoma, so I wanted to root for Oklahoma State. Well, and Lon said, you know, Kansas. You know, he, right. Everybody wanted to be a Kansas fan in the, in the state, but there are a lot of Wildcat fans, as we know. Power Cats. I like that. That's going to be a foul, and Christian Brown being aggressive to the cup will go to the line. So you say, why is Christian Brown not making threes? Well, they're taking it away. Logically, in this league, it's like your neighborhood. Everybody knows everybody else. What I like about Christian Brown, gets downhill, gets to the basket. Let's get a couple free throws to try to get it going. This kid's had 30 this year against St. Joe's. He had a monster game at home against West Virginia. Keeps getting better. And that's his first point this afternoon, 0 for 4 from the field so far. He struggled the last time they played in, in Lawrence. I'll he only you, had five points. But I'll tell you, he and uh, Ochai Abaji kept Kansas in that Baylor game. They cut it to five in the second half, and those two guys were on fire. Two free throws are good, and we have ourselves a one-possession ball game. Oklahoma has led most of this contest, but only up three right now with two and a half to go. Well, they have squandered a number of opportunities to stretch this lead out. Here's Harmon leading the game and scoring. He's at 13. He's not looking to shoot it with Garrett on him. This guy will. Mismatch. Nice feed inside. Blocked by Wilson. Oh, great play by Jalen Wilson. Saved the basket. Nice pass inside. Kansas second in the conference in blocks per game. Now two minutes to go in the half. Here's Abaji. 
Off the window, no. Another rebound for Brady Manick. Manick playing that five spot now for Alon Kruger. Uh, he had it, but he just lost his balance. Mo Gibson being guarded by Garrett, which is a sign of respect. And Mo got downhill onto the basket because Garrett challenged the three. Well, see where, how far Garrett is? Now watch, he just lost his balance. And that's what we call PhD right there. You gotta be able to spin that ball, proper hand development, PhD. You gotta be able to spin that ball off the glass. That was an opportunity that Mo is gonna regret. Sooners now one for their last eight from the field. It goes out of bounds. And Kansas with a three can tie this game. Bill, uh, Bill Self is ecstatic being down three because they have played poorly offensively to their, to their level anyway, and Oklahoma has not taken advantage. Rich, they only have 29 points, Oklahoma, when they were off to such a great start. Yeah, shooting at a 32% clip overall after such a torrid start in the first few minutes. Here's Wilson. Now, Aaron very, Pass out of bounds, but it's going to stay with the Jayhawks. Yep. I guarantee you, I know the halftime talk. Guys, guys, you know how lucky we are? We're going to play way better in the second half. How many times have we seen that from Kansas when they've gone on the yeah. road through the years? People call Bill Self a master tinkerer. What do they mean by that? Well, he's not wedded to one system the way some coaches are. Roy Williams at Carolina is winning these national titles with the box set offense. Bill will figure out what is best year to year for his team to be its best and will adjust. Remember, we saw Dotson constantly driving downhill. Mm -hmm. Doak was away from Dotson for the lobs. Every team is different at Kansas, and this team not as explosive as they've been, but he will continue to figure out the best way for them to play. Well, the KU defense has really locked it down recently. Oklahoma's won for their last eight from the field and forced Oklahoma into seven turnovers. Another great play by Marcus Garrett. Brady Manick had about three-inch size advantage, but Marcus Garrett, we've seen it in his career. He's guarded all five positions. Great defense right there. That's why he was the National Defensive Player of the Year last year, yep. and now he's doing it on offense. And he also went two for one right there. Typical of Bill Self. Let's get one shot up before 38, which they did. And now, as long as they get a defensive rebound, they will get a second possession in the final minute compared to Oklahoma's one possession. What does Oklahoma want to do here? Get the ball to Reeves and make plays, and that's not a good play. Here's Abaji. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go. It's in the hands of Marcus Garrett, who leads the Jayhawks with 10 points. I like Garrett downhill somehow. Five to go. Wilson. Contested three, no good. Harmon's going to have a chance from beyond midcourt, but it doesn't fall. Oklahoma with a one-point lead over the ninth-ranked Jayhawks, 29-28. It's halftime in Norman. Now we send you back to the studio. Here's Reese Davis. Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. We're in the Big 12 where number nine Kansas trails Oklahoma by 129-28. OU led the entire first half, but interestingly enough, both top scorers on this team have been held scoreless in the first 20 minutes. From inside the Lloyd Noble Center, alongside Fran Fischilla, I'm Rich Hollenberg. So Ochai Abaji, zero points, but Marcus Garrett picked up the scoring slot. Yes, and when you're in the neighborhood, everybody knows everybody, so that both leading scorers, their strengths, Reeves and Abaji, have been taken away. But we know Marcus Garrett is going to step up and play the way he's capable. Let's take a look. Ten points, five rebounds tonight for Marcus Carrot. Bill Self wants him to be more aggressive, particularly with his own offense. Knocking down two threes. Of course, when you get Marcus Garrett, you get the great defense on all five positions. And here's what I love. What is a two for one? When the ball goes through the basket, you usually want to get that shot up over 40 seconds so that you get a chance with the 30-second shot clock to get the second possession. Bill Self's as good as anybody in the country. Marcus Garrett, perfect execution. And the Marcus Garrett that Bill Self needs to see as Kansas tries to break out of this mini slump. Here's Abaji. And Quet the rebound. Good look for Ochai. He will keep shooting it. His confidence level this year, shooting 40% sky high. And there's more defense by Marcus Garrett. 
That's a disruption, if not a steal. The ninth deflection by the KU Jayhawks. And now there's 10 on the shot clock. Reeves had to give it up to Queth. No good. That was a good defensive possession. Absolutely. Kansas's defense in the last 10 minutes of the first half was just typical. Nice spin move off the window for McCormick. So what do we see in the last four games? Establishing McCormick to start the half in the game. Why? Because it's an easy opportunity to score, but once you establish him inside, it should open up things on the perimeter. First lead of the game for the number nine Jayhawks. Ten on the shot clock again. Well, good help by McCormick. Harmon? No. He leads all team scorers with 13. Rich, the momentum of this game is currently strongly in KU's favor because Oklahoma has not found offensive answers. McCormick going to yep. work with the right hand now. Oh yeah, no, this is, this is vintage Bill Self now. As David McCormick continues to improve offensively, they'll play through him until he gets fatigued. And then they'll go back to the smaller lineup or light foot at the five. Kansas looking to avoid three straight losses. The last time Bill Self lost three straight games, got to go back eight years to the 2012-13 season. There's Harmon, his first two of the second half, and he is 15. Davion was outstanding in the first half. He, along with Abaji, to me, two of the most improved players in this conference. Garrett surveying. Last year, that would have been a lob to Azabuki. This year, you don't have to leave McCormick. McCormick, not that time. Her quest didn't give up any real estate under the block. See how McCormick is going to let Queth shoot that. Harkless off the screen. Remember, this young man missed the first four games. He was going to redshirt this year. When the NCAA offered the blanket waiver to transfers, he gets better and better. He started the last three and has been a real spark plug for the Oklahoma Sooners. Exactly. Two-way player, much like Garrett. Here's Abaji. And finally, one goes down for Ochai Abaji. Well, as we said, Rich, he's going to keep shooting. His confidence level is high. He has really become the go-to guy as a junior. He knows it, and it's part of the role he has to fill. He was scoreless in their win against Creighton, but that was the only time he was scoreless this year. Scoreless no more in this one. See, they're chasing him off the line. Look, at, look you're going to play him tough, make him drive, shoot the mid-range, and he knocks it down. You know, in that Creighton game, he actually played a really good floor yeah. game. Here he is guarding Reeves. Austin Reeves still scoreless in this one. Harmon, and the foul is going to be called on the big man McCormick. I love what Harmon did. He just threw his body into the defender. You know, that, that's a little unfair. He got McCormick was just penalized for being 6'10 because Harmon just drove right into the defender. Smart play. How about this, friend? That's the first free throw attempt of the game for the Oklahoma Sooners, who are one of the better free throw shooting teams in the nation. 76.6% as a team. Harmon knocks them both down. Lost his great-grandmother this week, his dad's grandmother, but uh, she was 91, and he told us yesterday she had a great life and uh, a little bit of a celebration from the family. Wilson. And a dunk missed by McCormick. That's what... That's where he has to become more consistent. Some of it is fatigue. He knows it. He, boy, he, this, I, I love this kid. I've always loved his energy. Take a look now. He's going strong, and he allows Queth to just get a piece from the backside. Yeah. We've seen the good and the not, not so, so good. Yeah, but you know, overall, last five games, he's been outstanding. Another whistle in the early going. We're not four minutes into this first half, but it's still a one-point Oklahoma lead, 35-34. Rich Hollenberg, Fran Fraschilla, great way to kick off your Saturday showcase on ESPN. A lot of blue bloods today, Rich. Blocked from behind, but they call the foul on Brown. 
Yeah. And now Austin Reeves will go to the line with a chance to get the scoring column. Well, and that's the fifth quick foul of the half by Kansas, so you don't want to put your opponent in a bonus. Take a look now. Brown, they do always a good job of fighting through those uh, dribble handoffs. We call them blow up the handoff. Fight through it. Don't stick to the screen. But you can see at the end of that replay that Christian Brown got Reeves in the, in the head. Reeves, sixth in scoring in the Big 12, fourth in free throw shooting. He makes his first two, and that's the first two points of the afternoon for Austin Reeves. I keep going to McCormick and sell up. They go inside out. Garrett off the mark. Abaji, the follow, no. But Ochai Abaji gets the foul and will go to the line as a reward. Alondis Williams and the Sooners up by three on the number nine Jayhawks. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12. Looking at Austin Reeves, number 12 for the Oklahoma Sooners. He is one of only two conference, major conference players to lead his team in points, rebounds, and assists. And yet, somehow he's underrated. Well, he transferred from Wichita where he was uh, an off-the-ball shooter type player since he's come here. And actually his senior year, you got to credit Davion Harmon for this, Juan Kruger moved Harmon to the two spot, Reeves to the point guard sl slot. Now, Harmon is the co-pilot out there, but here's another thing Reeves has done. You ready for this? Can you believe in the last 20 years, only Ben Simmons has had a game where he's had 40 points, five rebounds, Five assists, three blocks. Austin Reeves did that last February against TCU. Today, good job by Kansas, slowing him down. There's a corner three by Davion Harmon. But they haven't slowed this guy down as he goes for his 20th point already. And Rich, we talked about it early. He has gotten better and better. And playing off the ball now allows him to free his mind to score. He's two off his season high, three off his career high. Garrett for three, answers. Good ball movement. Garrett got rid of it quickly to Abaji, but what happens? Close on Abaji, back to Garrett. And a much more aggressive Marcus Garrett today, offensively. Oklahoma four, or six for 15 from three so far today. 40% from beyond the arc. Oh, look at, look at Garrett, the harassment. And a little bit of a bailout foul, nine on the shot clock. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, there was very little contact there, but McCormick reached in, and that got him in trouble. Otherwise, the technique from the waist down I thought was really good. Bill Self didn't like it. Just heard Bill Self say, oh, yeah. it's got to be contact <laughs> to be a foul. Yep, can hear everything this year. 10 on the shot clock, Harkless, got it! Uh oh, this kid, this kid's growing on you. He had, he had a good couple years for Mark Gottfried at Northridge, but you can see why he's in the starting lineup now. He's the Marcus Garrett of Oklahoma. Here's the Marcus Garrett of Marcus Garrett's. And getting it taken away from by the Marcus Garrett of Oklahoma. <laughs> Elijah Harkless, he's started the last three games, he's averaged over six points, seven rebounds, and three assists, but he's also averaging three steals in that time. Uh, great go screen right there, and there's the shot, we'll show you that maybe later. It's a screen, take a look, watch it, look at the hands by Harkless, who's from Southern California, Itawanda High School, same school that produced Darren Collison. And uh, getting a chance to go, like we've seen in this league, from the mid-major level to the high-major level. Think of Macy Oteague and Adam Flagler at Baylor. And he's their version, Lon Kruger, of that kind of player for this team. Off the mark on the front end of the one-and-one. One. But we saw that three-pointer go down. He knocks him down all the time in practice. Looks as smooth as an order of mac and cheese at Rudy's here in Norman. Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> A little more harassment. Oh, nice cut. Good pass, McCormick to Garrett. And now, Marcus Garrett has 15. Rich, this is the cat and mouse game. Oklahoma did not double David McCormick in the first half. They've started to double him, 
Garrett recognized it, cut to the basket, and McCormick found him. That's what we mean by making an adjustment to the defense's adjustment. And it goes on in this league with these coaches every week. Yeah, you said there's going to be a chess match this afternoon, and we're seeing it. Queth. He's not shooting that anymore. Armin will with two on the shot clock. He got it off, but it's a shot clock violation. Another good defensive stand by Bill Self's Jayhawks. Let's go back and watch now. Watch a little more attention from Parkless, but he turns his back on Garrett, and that's a no-no. You got to be able to dig in on that post defender, but maintain a vision of your man. Garrett saw it, easy cut to the basket. Kansas can tie with a three. Abaji off the mark. Wide open, good delivery by Harris. Harmon, tough shot, good follow by Queff. Did he pass it on purpose? I'm not sure. But he certainly brought McCormick to the ball, and that allowed Queff to get the easy one. Here's Jalen Wilson, 10 in blue, had a hot start to this game, but has been quiet for the most part since. Love this intensity level both ways. Yes. And another bucket by Marcus Garrett. This is the Marcus Garrett that we've seen on occasion this year. But Bill Self likes this. Again, wants him to score more. He has a team high 17. His season high is 22 for the Jayhawks. First game of the year, I believe, right. against Gonzaga. That ball looked like it was off a Jayhawk. Listen, Rich, Bill Self's got 10,000 more wins than I do. But when I had a guy like Marcus Garrett, I would tell him, listen, you need to score for us. I'm going to take you out of the game if you don't look to score. So you decide. You either look to score or you're not going to play. Well, and he's looking to score now. Well, I'm not saying Bill said that to him because their connection is like co-coaches in some ways. But he certainly has gotten Bill's message that you hurt our team if you just constantly look to facilitate on this team. 35 and white, Brady Manick back on the floor for Lon Kruger. Harkless fights for the ball. He wanted to put the shot up from his rear. And Ochai Abaji grabbing one of his fingers on his left hand there in the scrum. On these loose balls, those officials will not let guys jump on each other. Marcus Pettigrew, take a look now. It's great hustle both ways. And there you go, there you go. See, Mitch Lightfoot jumps on Harkless. And they used to let that go. In, you know, in the old days, back in 2015. Harkless just 5 for 11 from the free throw stripe this Technical. year. Finally got it. Marcus Pettigrew had enough. He finally got Bill Self. Bill Self, we can hear everything Bill saying. Unlike if it's 16,300 in Allen Fieldhouse, and Marcus Pettigrew said enough. You know, we had a situation, you and I did, last week, Rich, down in Austin, where the Texas bench was yelling at Kevin McCullough, you can't shoot. He hits a three. He mouths something over to the players on the bench. Referee was right there. There's no crowd. Heard everything. Yeah. So. A rare miss from the stripe from Austin Reeves. So he goes one for two on the technical free throws and it'll be Oklahoma basketball. Bill Self and the rest of the country of coaches, they don't have to say the magic words anymore because there's not a lot of fans in the stands to mask some of those words. Yes. The lead is four for the Sooners. They've won two of their last three inside this building against Kansas. Here's DeWan Harris, backup point guard. Garrett, aggressive still, and a foul is drawn. He's smart. Well, Elijah Harkless and company hanging on to a four-point lead, looking to pull the upset at home against Kansas. In, in this kind of situation in conference play, as a matter of fact, you go all the way back to the year after they won a national title in 1988. That's the last time they were four and three in conference play. And the last time Bill Self has lost three straight in Big 12 games, eight years ago. You know what also happened in 88-89? It's the last time Kansas 
has not been in the NCAA tournament. The blue blood for a reason. And certainly losing two in a row is understandable in the Big 12. And because of this season and all the different scheduling snafus that have happened, Bill Self has played two in a row, now three in a row today on the um, road. Yes, the, the Iowa State game was last Saturday. That was postponed. Likely. Here's Maddock for three. Off the mark. His confidence level this season has been like a thermometer. Up and down, hot and cold. Wilson, left hand, nice like take yep. by Jalen Wilson and a little bit of a momentum shift. Remember what's happened now, out of the timeout, they are smaller and Bill Self feels like Jalen Wilson's best basketball this season has been earlier in the year at the five spot. That doesn't happen as much lately because David McCormick has played very well, but out of a timeout, he's looking at his team, he's going, wait a minute, I got Jalen Wilson at the five, okay Jalen, Time to get downhill. That's adjusting and coaching minute by minute in a game like this. Like the Netflix show, Queen's Gambit. We have a chess match going on. Yes, we do. Nine minutes gone by in the second half. Tie game at 46. Untied by Jalen Hill. That was his second three of the season. Two of seven behind the arc. He had all day to shoot it. He was open for a reason. They left him open, but he banged it. Now Dewan Harris. Nice. He doesn't shoot a lot, and he gets a bucket. Like it. He's got a bucket and an assist. He's coming off playing 20 minutes against Baylor. And remember, Rich, the more he gets to play, and they really like him. He's the only pure point guard. It gives Marcus Garrett the mental health break that he needs. Garrett can stay on the court, not have to run the team and play off of Harris, I always use this example, two co-pilots. Here's the Geyer connection. Harmon guarding his former high school teammate, Jalen Wilson. That happened 10,000 times at Geyer High. Mitch Lightfoot showing good patience. So they've got a flop on Manic. So what happens this year is they'll let the play unfold. And Mitch, take a look now, I'm gonna tip. That's in between. There was enough contact for that not to call the flop, but ultimately I think Keith Kimball got it right, and they didn't penalize the offensive player. They allowed him to finish the move. Halfway through the second half, we got a good one in Norman. Alongside Fran Fraschilla, Rich Hollenberg. The Saturday Showcase showcasing the number nine Kansas Jayhawks looking to avoid their third straight loss in Big 12 play. Well, it's a big day today on ESPN Family and Networks at 4 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Duke and Louisville highlighting a full day of hoops action. And then tonight on ESPN Plus, get ready. I know Fran's going to be watching this one back home. UFC 257, Conor McGregor returns to the Octagon to face off in the main event against Dustin Poirier. Who's got quicker hands? Conor McGregor or Marcus Garrett? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, who's your Big 12 basketball version of Conor McGregor? Well, it's it's got to be Mac McClung. I like that. You Why know? do you say that? Because if you're a fan, you love him. If you're not a fan, you hate him. <laughs> and that's what all great athletes, yeah. you know, have. Mac's got that swagger, right? Yeah, we saw him last he, week in Austin. He owes us a uh, post-game interview, by that's the way. Right. We are going to hold him to that. But uh, I cannot believe I saw Sports Science last night on, on Sports Center. And the, the, the hand speed of Conor McGregor is incredible. Nice cut. Wilson! Oh, see, now that is PhD right there. Proper hand development. Wilson got caught underneath the basket, and he had to spin that ball in a way that allowed it to just kiss off the glass. And a good look by Mitch Lightfoot. Felt like Tom Hanks there. Wilson! <laughs> High degree of difficulty. That's what it was. Ten on the shot clock for the Sooners. They're down by one. Pull up, jumper. No. Rees has been off this afternoon. The big rebound by Jalen Hill and a foul called on Kansas. 
Well, they coach you up to grab a rebound with two hands, but Jalen Hill did it with one. Let's watch right now. Watch this cut by Wilson. Watch this spin he puts on this ball so that it kisses off the glass really softly. Good look again. Really good. You have to work on that. You've got to be able to fall in love and have a long-term relationship with the backboard if you're going to be a good finisher. And here's good news for Lon Kruger and the Sooners. They're in the double bonus now. There's nine minutes left in this game, and they're one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Boy, there was a stretch, Rich, around New Year's where they were making over 80% of their free throws, yep. and it's dropped all the way down to about 77%. <laughs> In Big 12 play, they came into today with 160 free throws made. Their opponents had only attempted 152. Always a stat you love as a coach. It shows you aggressiveness. And also, when you get to that line, you don't want them to be invisible turnovers with misses. Oh, good Stolen hand. away by Gibson. And he finishes it the other end. Jalen got a little careless in trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. That ball came up too high, and Mo Gibson swiped it. Same thing. Harris in trouble. What oh, a look man. to oh. Mitch Lightfoot. <laughs> Great find, man. He went right over the shoulder. Bill Self raved about this kid last year when he was sitting out redshirting. Formerly committed to Missouri State. Great friendship with Christian Brown on the same AAU team, Mocan Elite. Here's Manic. Finally, Brady Manic knocks one down to the pleasure of the Lloyd Noble Center crowd. Listen, that's he's made over 200 threes in his career. He can't lose his confidence. Well, that's going to be a Kansas turnover, and the momentum swings back to the Oklahoma Sooners. Watch this over the shoulder pass by Harris. Easy finish, and Brady Manick doing Brady Manick things in the Lloyd Noble Center. Knocking him from deep. Seth Greenberg with you. was checking on UConn and Creighton Denzel Mahoney. And mid-range jumper. UConn's hanging in. Two-point game, just over 13 minutes to play in that one. Seth, you really like the Syracuse team against Virginia Tech. I do like this team. Their ability to get the offensive glass. And Quincy Guerrier is one of the elite offensive rebounders in the ACC. Their guards have got to start to not count some jumpers for Syracuse, but I like the Syracuse team. All right, we have what's shaping up to be a good finish here in Norman, Oklahoma. The number nine Kansas Jayhawks trail the Oklahoma Sooners by four with 7.35 to go. Rich Hollenberg, Fran Frischill, and we saw Brady Manick knock down his most recent three-point attempt. He's now 20 points shy of tying the great Mookie Blaylock for 20th all-time in OU scoring history. Uh, Reeves left that short, short, Rich. Not been his day today, five points. He's now 0 for 7 from the uh, from the, the field. Here's Anaruna. Can't get it to go. And Reeves will slow the pace. Davion Harmon getting a rest. He'll finish up this game, I believe. But um, Mo Gibson, the transfer from North Texas, has been outstanding. Good hands. This Garrett has been a nuisance today, yeah. especially for Reeves. Look at this. An all Big 12 matchup, and Marcus Garrett wins that battle. Here's Hill. No, Garrett clears. Marcus Garrett's had a whale of a ball game. A double-double, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Rich, if I were voting right now, Davion Mitchell this year would get National Defensive Player of the Year vote from me. But certainly Marcus Garrett coming off the award a year ago as he loses it is still one of the two or three best defenders in the in the entire country. Harkless, Good working job. on Garrett. Yeah, Garrett did not bite. Harkless wanted to shot fake him. Too experienced. Here's Hill. Reeves, shot fake. Puts it up, knocks it down. 
he first field goal of the game, Fran, for he, Austin Reeves. He earned it. He had to work really hard to get the first one. He turned uh, lemons into lemonade with that and made the little 14-footer, but it was good defense. 5.51 to go. OU up six. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketballs. A loss today by Kansas, and the unthinkable happens, Fran. They would technically drop down to the lower half of the Big 12 standings, and Oklahoma would have their signature win and jump up to third place in the Big 12. Yes, and Rich, the NCAA investigation, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know if they're going to be guilty or innocent. Who knows? Who knows what the NCAA does, but... The fact that that has hung over this program for three years now, you can tell it has affected recruiting. This is a good Kansas team. It's certainly not anywhere near the best Bill Self teams. But right now, this team is made up of a bunch of good players without a superstar or two like we were used to last year. And in my opinion, you can see the residue of not the investigation of what's going to happen, but the fact that it keeps hanging over the program. Reeves has a chance at a three-point play. Back-to-back -back buckets by Austin Reeves. Cat and mouse right here out of the timeout. He's got the advantage. Harris is on Reeves. That's a three or four-inch difference. And watch Reeves take him in. Harris with a good job of not fouling, and Reeves making a tough shot. The young man from Cedar Ridge High School in Newark, Arkansas. Now eight points all in the second half for Austin Reeves. Good shooters have short memories. Five minutes to go. Oklahoma looking for a signature win in this 2020-21 season. And the foul is going to go on Harkless. Coming up at 2 Eastern on ESPN, North Carolina State heads into Chapel Hill to take on the Tar Heels. North Carolina has dominated that rivalry of late. That game's coming up right after us here in Norman, also available on the ESPN app. But looking for a little revenge after the Wolfpack caught them right before Christmas. So Roy Williams and the six freshmen, Garrison Brooks inside. I think they're going to get better and better. I think they'll be in the NCAA tournament. There's Brown fumbling the basketball. Garrett trying to get to the basket, and he can. The he steal. Can. Yep. And, and Harris. away by Harris. I'll tell you what they're doing. Oh! He made it! Dewan Harris, just his third three-pointer this season. He gets the steal, Rich, and then the basket. And what Oklahoma has started to do is really crowd Garrett on the drive, but the redshirt freshman from Columbia, Missouri with two big plays. Just a four point game. Keep your eye on that play. That could be a game changer. Manic working on the smaller Wilson. Brady Manic had it knocked away by Abaji. One second left. Harkless off to the left. Chance to make it a one possession ball game for Kansas. If you're Oklahoma now, you gotta crowd the lane because Garrett's aggressive. So is Abaji. Off the window, and Ochai Abaji will go to the line and shoot two. Juan Harris, who's won a state championship in his own right at Rockbridge High School in Columbia, Missouri. Take a look. The steal, the kick, two for four on the season. Now he's three for five. Tipping off in about 17 and a half minutes. And Daniels with 21 in the last meeting against the Heels. All right, RD, we got an exciting finish here. 340 to go, a four-point lead for the Oklahoma Sooners and Ochai Abaji on the line. There's a little bit of a six degrees of separation with Dewan Harris. Yes, you know what? Dewan Harris played for Jim Scanlon. He's a great coach in the state of Missouri, Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. His son, Jim Scanlon's son, Brennan, played at Rockbridge High School in Columbia also. Brennan is now the coach at Oak Park High School in Kansas City where he coached the guy at the foul line, Ochai Abaji. And then you throw in the fact that Christian Brown and Harris were AAU teammates, and we've covered the whole gamut right there. A little Kansas, Missouri basketball history. Got ourselves a three-point game coming down the stretch. 
And a chance to tie with a triple for KU. That was the 11th turnover for the Sooners this afternoon. Harris still on the floor. Garrett's going to get downhill. Abaji and Brown are loaded for Bear. Big rebound from Harkless. Garrett back on Reeves, so that's man on man. Two of the best in this league. Switch. Reeves, left side, got it. And that's what you call a chess match. They took Garrett in the switch, and Reeves took the defender who switched onto him. Two great coaches. Every time out, you have to pay attention. Almost 1,400 combined wins between Bill Self and Lon Kruger. This one will be a big one for either to get. Four guards and Manic. Harmon's been great. Reeves getting better. And Reeves and Garrett again. Let's see if they can create a switch again. They do. Reeves trying to take advantage. Five to shoot. Gibson with the ball. Top of the key. Oh, Off yeah. Off the window. Oh. Emoja with emotion. Great play. You'll see he went under the, the, the armpit of Harris. Excuse me, Wilson. Wilson crowded the line. No three-point shot. Watch him go under his armpit to finish this. Great job by Mo Gibson. Underneath. Perfect. It's a young man from Waco, Texas, recruited by Grant McCaslin, former Baylor assistant at North Texas. You know the great thing about this kid? Juan Kruger called McCaslin in the spring and said, this kid wants a transfer. I hope you're okay with it. Great kid, coach. Take him. Gibson gives it up to Abaji. A huge triple from Ochai Abaji, just his second field goal of the game. Abaji and Brown will not hesitate down the stretch. And a foul called before the shot, but it doesn't matter because the double bonus for the Sooners. See, take a look. He's trailing as the foreman, and that's way too much room that Davion Harmon gave him. And the one thing I really love about this kid, we watched him play half a season as a freshman. I don't think he played well last year. I don't think he improved. This year, a different Ojai Abaji confidence level through the roof. And the guy on the foul line, obviously, Austin Reeves. You don't have to worry about his confidence. He can go 0 for 7. It doesn't matter. Shooter's going to shoot. Two for two from the line for Reeves. He has a dozen. And he has nine of Oklahoma's last 11 points. Two shooters, two drivers for Kansas. Deep three. Brown hasn't had the range today. Got a foul, I believe. You don't want to. You don't want to utilize clock. Got to put Oklahoma on the line. Some three-quarter court pressure. And is that a timeout called on the floor? I think so. Good call, Rich. One timeout remaining for the Kansas Jayhawks, down by six with a minute 15 to go. Well, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. This Wednesday, Kansas and Oklahoma women square off. Then Thursday, the Jayhawks will play host to TCU. Both games are at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. And finally, on Tuesday, February 2nd, KU hosting rival Kansas State in the Sunflower Showdown. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPN Plus dot com slash big 12 now so here's the problem rich for bill self you mentioned it earlier oklahoma one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country virtually everybody i haven't looked at my notes but virtually everybody who will be on the court for oklahoma is an 80 plus percent foul shooter when you're down six like this the clock is as important as the score so you don't want oklahoma to run off 20 seconds I think if you build self, quick trap or two, foul right away, and then you just have to hope that the 300 hitter goes 0 for 4. Because that's the analogy now. You also, if you're Bill Self, have to have a comeback offense, which means we have to play fast, we have to either drive it or 
If we can get the trail three, shoot it quickly. We need possessions. He's done this many, many times. He's got a plan. Now this is a tough road to hoe when you're down six. Kansas seven for 19 from beyond the arc this afternoon. Oklahoma nine for 23. Kansas has just one timeout remaining. Possession arrow with the Sooners. Here's Reeves. Don't they want, want, yeah, don't want to foul him. They want the ball in his hands as much as possible. Bill's not going to foul. He's going to play it out. It is a two possession game. One minute to go. Reeves deep off the mark. Garrett, the rebound is 12th of the afternoon. Where's the three coming? From Abaji. Short. And Harkless the rebound, and he gets fouled right away with 49.1 left. And Oklahoma can sniff the upset. Small thing, but watch Harkless. This is a man's rebound right there. Small thing, but watch Harkless. This is a man's rebound right there. It's a small thing, but the thing that he did was he closed the door on that Kansas possession. Young man from Rialto, California, who has fit in nicely in his first month of Big 12 play after transferring from Cal, Nor Cal Northridge. And you talk about that rebound. He has seven this afternoon. Last time out against Kansas State, 13 rebounds from the guard position. Well, in watching him improve, he's become their Marcus Garrett. And he gets both clutch free throws for Oklahoma, who is now up eight with 45 to go. Abaji, got it. Yep. He will keep shooting because he's got great confidence and a good play right there. And that's really one of the areas where he's improved is getting that three off off the dribble. You know what this reminds me of? It's like you're going into the ninth inning and you're telling your home run hitter, swing for the fences. So Ochai, he knows they need possessions and baskets. He's going to shoot the three. You have to let it go. The last time the Kansas Jayhawks lost three in a row, was the 2012-2013 season. It stands to note that that same season they went on to win the Big 12 Conference Tournament Championship. But interestingly enough, Fran, the last time they lost three in a row in that 2012-13 season, the third straight loss came in Norman against Oklahoma. Well, this is a lifetime right now. 41 seconds is a two possession game. Bill Self, again, you know, this is special teams right now. This is Belichick and Parcells. This is the onside kick. And when you go to a Kansas practice, much like we saw with Oklahoma yesterday, he spends the final 15, 20 minutes of every practice after January 1st in these situations. So what do you got? Full court pressure, gamble to trap it and steal it. And if you can't, then we have to give a foul. And remember, this is a good foul shooting team. Now, Jalen Hill has come out on the court, and he's only a 71% foul shooter. So if you can get him, you give it to him if you're Kansas. And Fran, on the other side of things, when Kansas has the basketball, Oklahoma only has 16 fouls so far, so they can give a foul up. They also have the possession arrow and two timeouts remaining. And that foul is going to go on Ochai Abaji and send Davion Harmon to the line. Harmon almost lost that ball. And Abaji felt like he got undercut a little bit. Take a look right here. He, he almost loses this ball. You know one thing, I've said it before, and only a coach would appreciate this. Davion Harmon just came to what we call a stride stop, okay? And that's just a little play, but because he kept his balance, Abaji ran right into him. That's why great programs work on footwork every day. Again, if you're Kansas, you're shooting the three ball now, unless you get an easy layup. Davion Harmon ties his season high with 22. A seven-point Oklahoma lead. And now time is of the essence. They need a shot, and they need it fast, and they get the foul before the shot. Oklahoma did a good job of crowding the line. There was no three to be had. Garrett recognized that, so he got to the basket. He'll shoot a one and one.
Interesting about Jalen Hill is he inbounded that ball. So do you, if you're a coach at home right now, in these situations, do you have a designated passer in situations where the ball must come in bounds? Yubi Brown had a guy years ago by the name of Scott Hastings who played at Arkansas. And he would play not a minute in an NBA game unless they needed an inbounds play late. Let's see if Jalen Hill can make another good pass in. And now Brady Manick on the floor. You're going to see some offense for defense substitutions, I'm sure, in the final 28 plus seconds. First one is good from Marcus Garrett, who's had a tremendous afternoon. Now 20 points to go along with 12 rebounds. Both free throws good. 21 for Garrett, and it's a five-point lead for Oklahoma as Jalen Wilson checks in. Still two possessions, Rich. Little carelessness right now, and Kansas can get back in this game. Good inbounds by Hill, and they get the ball to a great free throw shooter. Shot clock is off. Reeves has it. And they finally get the foul. Reeves wasn't giving that ball up. And he shouldn't have, given his free throws and the fact that he had a timeout left. By the way, he also had the possession arrow. So jump ball means Oklahoma still had it. And Rich, both teams, one's in the Hall of Fame. We've seen great, subtle coaching moves down the stretch. Oklahoma on the verge of winning their third game in Norman against Kansas in their last four. I don't know about you, but I said this earlier in the year. I think their starting five is as good as anybody in this league with the possible exception of the Baylor Bears. They certainly today show that they have the same type of talent as Kansas. And that should do it. Oklahoma's going to improve to 5-3 and three in conference play and send Kansas to their third straight defeat for the first time since 2012-2013. Your final in Norman. The Sooners pull off the upset 75-68 over the ninth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks to improve to 5-3. and three. And they're behind just the number two Baylor Bears and the number five Texas Longhorns as we stand right now in the Big 12 standings. Final thoughts, Fred? Uh, Davion Harmon was brilliant today. 20th birthday yesterday, playing against a kid, he's uh, a young man, a friend who he's known since second grade, Jalen Wilson. He showed up big for the Sooners. Kansas is the only Big 12 team with an all-time winning record against the Oklahoma Sooners. This was the 